Hi, I'm Claire and welcome to Genre Wise, news from the world of SFF. I'm recording on April 8th and today we're going to start by looking at awards news, then we'll move on to books, fandom news, then film and TV news, and finally IRL news. For every item that I'm talking about I'm going to link some extra information and more in-depth articles in the description box below so that you can always check there for further reading. First, in award news, we've got Hugo finalists. Dublin 2019 has announced the final ballot for the 2019 Hugo Awards, Lodestar Award for Best Young Adult Book, and John W. Campbell Award for Best New Writer, as well as the final ballot for the 1944 Retro Hugo Awards. Overall, I'm really happy with all of this year's finalists. I think the list represents where the genre is at the moment pretty accurately. I'm absolutely over the moon that the archive of our own finally made the ballot for best related work, but it does remain incredibly frustrating to see podcasts dominate the fancast category when I'd been hoping that maybe we might see our first ever booktuber finalist this year. Much as I'd love to keep talking about the Hugos, the full shortlist is too long for me to run through here in any more detail, but if you're interested in my Hugo opinions, I will link a Twitter thread of my initial reactions when finalists were first announced category by category and everything, as well as a live stream discussing the Hugos that I did with a whole bunch of booktube people a few days ago. The David Gemmell Awards for Fantasy are closing after 10 years, citing insufficient manpower and a lack of suitable volunteers to take on committee roles. This is effective immediately, which means that last year's awards, 2018 awards, will be the final ones and there won't be new awards for this year. Previous Gemmell Award winners include Mark Lawrence, Peter Newman and Robin Harp. First up in books, Tobux has acquired a space opera trilogy from author Morris Broadus. He's previously had a short fiction published from Tor.com Publishing. We don't know much about this new trilogy yet, except that it was pitched as The Expanse meets Black Panther, and it explores an intergalactic Afrofuturistic empire. The first book is set to publish in 2021, so I guess it's time to create a most anticipated of 2021 shelf for my Goodreads. Next up is is more space opera coming out in 2021, and I mean that literally because it is a sequel to Catherine M. Valenti's Space Opera, which is currently a Hugo Award finalist in the Best Novel category. The sequel has just been announced, it will be called Space Oddity, and will be coming out in Spring 2021. There is no blurb and no cover as of yet, but the Bards and Noble SFF blog has an interview with Catherine M. Valenti where there might be more information. I didn't want to read the whole thing because because I haven't finished Space Opera yet and I don't want any spoilers, but I will link it in the description box below for you to check out if you've already read the book. Next up, Guillermo del Toro is expanding the world of Pan's Labyrinth 13 years after the film was first released, with a novel titled Pan's Labyrinth, The Labyrinth of the Fawn. The book is co-written with New York Times bestselling author Cornelia Funk and comes out on July the 2nd, 2019 from Catherine Tegan Books. It is going to be an illustrated novel revisiting the events of the movie, but there's not much else that we know about it just yet. Coming up in May 2019, Mary Robinette Kowal's The Calculating Stars will be getting a UK release from Solaris, along with a new cover from Head Design. The Calculating Stars is the first book in the Lady Astronaut series. It was first released from Tor Books in the US in 2018 and has received wide praise. Indeed, it was one of my favourite novels of last year, and more importantly, it is currently a Hugo Award finalist for Best Novel. Next up, we have a cover for The Never Tilting World, the first in a new young adult fantasy series by the Bone Witch author Rin Chupeco. This gorgeously intricate and intriguing cover was designed by Florian Cohen, and I'm not gonna lie, I would 100% pick this up in a bookstore based on the cover alone. But I've also heard a lot of great things about Rin Chupeco's writing, so I'm going to have to try and pick this one up when it comes out on the 15th of October 2019. Good news for the audiobook fans out there, author Aliette de Bourdain has announced that there is now an audiobook for her recent novella, in the Vanishers Palace, a lesbian retelling of Beauty and the Beast in which the Beast, 
is a dragon. The audiobook is currently available on Audible as well as on Scribd, and you can of course also check your local library's audio catalogue. And finally, in books, I want to shout out the Kickstarter campaign for Planetside, a pretty fantastic looking sci-fi comic anthology. Planetside is created and edited by comic writer Thea Ferrara, and it will feature 28 different sci-fi slice of life stories, just regular people living their everyday lives but in cool sci-fi worlds. If that sounds as good to you as it does to me, you can check out the campaign page to see some of the gorgeous, gorgeous art. There will be a link in the description box below. They've raised a decent chunk of their goal already and they've got over two weeks to go, so here's hoping that we'll actually get to see this anthology happen. Next up is Fandom News and we are starting with Fantasy Cafe's 8th Annual Women in SFF Month, which will be running all throughout April, featuring a series of guest posts highlighting some of the women doing amazing work in speculative fiction today. In this first week alone, we've had guest posts about science fiction romance, the women of international SF, the ideology of space, and more. All from fantastic guest writers, including Empire of Sand author Tasha Suri, SF and Translation editor Rachel Kordasko, and Double Hugo Award finalist Renee, who co-hosts the podcast Fangirl Happy Hour and co-edits the Hugo Award winning fanzine Lady Business. Next up is The Shipping Survey. This is a new project from Fansplaining, one of my all-time favourite podcasts. If you don't know it, it's a podcast all about fandom, and co-hosts Flourish Clink and Elizabeth Minkle have put together other surveys in the past on topics like fandom tropes and fanfiction definitions. This survey is all about shipping, and I'm incredibly excited to see what results we get from it, because it's only been out for a few days, but they've already had thousands and thousands of responses, which is pretty amazing. As with their previous surveys, Elizabeth and Flourish are planning on doing a podcast going over the results and talking about what conclusions can be drawn from the data, but they're also going to be releasing that raw data for people to look at. And as someone who is very nerdy about that kind of thing, I am super, super looking forward to that. I completed the survey myself a couple days ago. It really didn't take a long time at all. So I would encourage you to check out the link to the survey in the description box below and complete it yourself. It is intended for anyone who wants to take it at all, whether you are someone who considers shipping to be a huge part of their life, or you are someone who are wondering why I've been talking about boats this entire time. And finally, I want to recommend a really in-depth, lovely interview with actor James Marsters, who played Spike on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Marsters spoke with Kristen Russo and Jenny Owen Youngs, the hosts of Buffering the Vampire Slayer, a Buffy recap podcast that I'd recommend in its own right, but they also made this interview available as a whole separate episode in case people are interested in just listening to that, and that is what I'm linking to in the description box below. Master talks about his career before and after Buffy, his training in the theatre, his time on the show, and when I say it's an in-depth interview, it's almost two hours long, and all of it is ridiculously entertaining and insightful, so again, I cannot recommend that enough. First up in film and TV news, Marvel have unveiled a new series of Avengers Endgame character posters. With half of the cast featured in colour, that's the half that is still alive post-Infinity War, and the rest of the cast is featured in black and white, that's obviously everyone who's been snapped. These posters confirm several snappings that we already knew about from the first trailer, but didn't really want to acknowledge as true. I was also very interested to note that both Gamora and Loki appeared in the black and white posters alongside people who were snapped, despite the fact that they died earlier in the movie. This, to me, absolutely reinforces the theory that they are 100% not dead and will be coming back along with everyone else. Next up, we've got an adaptation of Octavia E. Butler's feminist science fiction epic Wild Seed, and that will be coming to Amazon Prime Video. The show is being developed by Viola Davis and Julius Tennant's Jew V Productions, and it is being co-written by Hugo and Nebula Award-winning novelist Nnedi Okorafor and acclaimed filmmaker Winuri Kahu, who will also direct. Sadly, there is no word yet on when we will actually be able to watch the series. 
Next up, Netflix have cast four of the five leading roles for their live-action Cowboy Bebop series. This new adaptation of the iconic anime series will run 10 episodes long. It will feature John Cho and Mustafa Shakir as bounty hunter Spike Spiegel and Jet Black respectively. Daniela Pineda and Alex Hassel will be joining them, but no word on whether any good pups have been cast to play the dog yet. Good news for Torchwood fans, there is more information about the upcoming full cast audio drama Torchwood The Sins of Captain John. We already knew the series would focus on Captain John Hart as portrayed by James Marsters, but publisher Big Finish have recently revealed that John Bowerman would also star as Captain Jack Harkness, of course. The only downer here is that the box set isn't going to be out until January 2020. And finally, we've got a new trailer for Game of Thrones Season 8. It doesn't really give us all that much new information, to be honest. We're blatantly just gonna have to wait to learn anything of consequence, but I wanted to mention it because I'm pretty excited about it. Also, if you're interested in seeing the cast looking super glamorous in fancy muggle clothing, there is a new teaser showing various current and former Thrones cast members dressed for the red carpet, and oh boy, do all of them clean up nice. Moving on to real life news, if you are attending this year's Worldcon in Dublin, Ireland, and you've got an Airbnb reservation, you might want to read up on a new piece of legislation coming into effect from June in Ireland. This new law aims to restrict high-priced short-term property rentals in areas like Dublin that have very high housing demand and growing issues with homelessness. Now, this is a good and important law and similar pieces of legislation regulating short-term rentals exist across the world. However, if you currently have an Airbnb reservation for this August, like I do, you should check with your host whether you'll be able to stay there or if you need to find alternate accommodation. And finally, in sadder news, we remember author Vonda N. McIntyre, who recently passed away of pancreatic cancer at age 70. She was a multiple award-winning author with over 15 novels and much short fiction to her name, as well as a champion of women in science fiction and fantasy and a founder of the Clarion West Writers' Workshop. I recommend checking her in memoriam post over at tor.com, which I've linked down below. It had a couple of lovely anecdotes about her life that made me smile. So that's it, this was Genrewise. I hope you enjoyed it, and please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you excited about the Hugo finalists? I'm certainly gonna try and read all of the novels. What do you think is gonna happen in Avengers Endgame? What about Game of Thrones season eight? And how cool is it that I got to bring up James Masters twice in one episode of Genre Wise? Those are all pretty important questions and I want to know your answers. If you like the show, please share it around. I work really hard on it and I'd love for as many people as possible to see it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me again in a couple of weeks for more science fiction, fantasy, and fandom news. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching, and see you soon.